what's up so in this video i'm going to show you a way that is a little bit less known on how to build a lead list of local businesses um, and i'm going to be doing this within apollo uh, so normally you might use a service like for example d7 lead finder or i've got play here for example um, but i'm going to show you maybe a, a little bit less of a known way that you can do this through apollo so uh, basically we're going to build the list um, over here i'm going to show you some of the different filters that you can use and some of the things that maybe other people uh, you might miss or other people might miss when they're kind of teaching you um, how to build a list. Um, now, Apollo isn't necessarily the best lit way to build lists for local businesses. Um, you're probably better off using like Google Maps or and Google uh, and Google Search and things like that, or you can do everything within Play. But I thought I'd show you this other way within Apollo that still allows you to build some, uh, get a list of some people, and then you can couple that up with, um, you know, doing a Google Search. Right? Excuse me, there's like a thing poking my head on the tree above me. Um, you can do a search like that through uh, through Google, and then you can also couple it with this list that you build with Apollo, and then you can make your list obviously even bigger and have larger uh, and more coverage, essentially. Um, so that's what we're trying to do here with, with this. All right, cool. So this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to come over to the People uh, tab up here. Um, and for this example, I'm going to be showing you how to build a list of, say, pest control um, businesses, small pest control businesses within. This one's going to be specifically for Australia, but you can do this in the US, UK, wherever you're targeting. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of sort of little known tricks or le um, things that I don't think people talk about as much that can be really helpful to find leads that aren't necessarily getting contacted. Because the thing with local lead gen is so many people have bombarded them with emails that if you go on kind of like the regular data providers, um, a lot of times you're gonna be you know pulling up lists that have been contacted like literally a hundred times before. So you wanna try and find ways that are a bit more unique um, or find people that haven't necessarily been contacted. I'm gonna show you a way on how you can actually do that. And again, even though Apollo is not the best way to actually find local businesses, it's still a way to find some that you can then add on top of the like Google Maps data that you're uh, scraping and things like that to add even more coverage so that you can contact people that aren't necessarily, um, you know, within the sort of main like databases that you, that you might find. Um, so the way we're going to do this is obviously a lot of local businesses uh, owners don't necessarily have LinkedIn. Um, so a lot of times the reason why things like Apollo don't necessarily work is because it connects usually to LinkedIn and has some kind of variant of LinkedIn's data. Um, but the thing is, some local business owners do have LinkedIn. The thing is, they usually have a title that's quite different to like, you know, founder, CEO, things like that. And a lot of times the filtrations that you might use on, you know, building a list where you're looking for a founder and you're looking for a business owner or a managing director or something like that, they won't come up in their LinkedIn title. So the way we're going to go about doing a job title scrape or a job title search here is actually through exclusion rather than inclusion. So what I mean by that is we're going to pull up the initial list here. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the filters in a second, but we'll start off with job titles. So I'm going to pull up a list here. And instead of, you know, for example, um, you know, typing in like director, business owner, CEO, and so on and so forth, right? That's going to give us like a decent amount of these people. Um, but at the same time, there may also be like a smaller amount of people that are missed from regular searches and databases because they just have a different title in their LinkedIn profile, right? It doesn't mean they're not, not on LinkedIn. They just have a different title. They're not calling themselves business owner. They're not calling themselves founder or director or anything like that on their LinkedIn. Um, so by doing an exclusion search, right, and it takes a little bit more work, but we're able to then build a list of people that aren't showing up in people's regular searches when they're actually doing like a, a database search or scrape. Um, so a lot of these are going to be, you know, um, are going to be that kind of double up with, uh, you know, your regular search. However, if you, if you keep going through and the, the aim here is to basically go through sort of like 10 to 20 of these and click on their LinkedIn profiles. And then from their LinkedIn profiles, you'll be able to see basically like obviously who they are and everything like that. Um, and if say like, you know, 10 out of 15 or 10 out of 12 or like eight out of 12 or something are um, like spot on or the kind of people that you want to target, then it's like a good list and you want to keep that list, right? Um, so for example, with this guy, it's a, he's a director, right? So that would be the kind of person you want to target. That's perfect. Person control professional, right? Um, now the thing is, a lot of these businesses are pretty small, right? They're pretty small. So a lot of times if they have employees, it's still worth reaching out to that employee because even though they may not be the founder or they may not list themselves as the founder, but they may be like their brother, you know, or they may be like their son um, and they just have a different title, right? And so 
by doing a regular search of like founder director, you're excluding a whole bunch of these people that could still have influence. You could forward your email to the owner, could talk to the owner, like all of these different things, or could just be the owner and they just don't have the name on there. Um, by doing an exclusion search rather than inclusion search, you're more likely to get larger coverage, right? And there's no harm in sending emails to people that aren't necessarily, you know, the exactly perfect fit. But if they're a small company and they're a small local business, they will most likely talk, right? And it could be that it gets forwarded or talked to to the actual person that you want to contact. So there is no harm in actually doing that, right? Um, so this is just an example. I've gone through and I removed, you know, for example, technician. I clicked through a couple of um, profiles and technician was just like not the right kind of thing same with like exterminator we don't want people who are like you know on the ground and things like that again they could be the founder but a lot of times if you click onto it like come from linkedin and it's got like 10 employees and they're an exterminator they could be like an external contractor or something like that so again you want to just remove the ones that don't necessarily have like um that you are like very obviously not the people that you want to reach out to but other than that you want to keep it relatively like uh, broad in that sense so once you've done your sort of exclusion, and again, this might take a little bit more manual work, so you click one by one and just kind of like double check it and stuff. It might take like five minutes to do, but once you've understood that a little bit and you can filter it down and still remain broad, then we'll move on to the next thing, which is obviously location targeting. So we can just, for this example, I'm just using Australia. Uh, employees, um, again, like anywhere from, anything from one to 50, we don't really want to go larger because then um, the service that, that we'd be offering in this case, um, which is advertising would just not necessarily fit. Um, and then in terms of industry and keywords, so what you want to do, because industries are going to be so broad, right? If I look over here and I look at the different industries, it's under consumer services, chemicals, um, you know, facility services, environmental services, like all sorts of different things. And the issue with that is, you know, we don't know what some of these industry or, or what Apollo is basically categorizing as, um, you know, for, for what industries these, these businesses are under. So uh, instead of sifting it and, and kind of filtering it by that, we're going to keep this completely open because it could be fall under loads of different categories. Instead, we're going to do it based on keywords, right? And a lot of the keywords here, you know, are, for example, pest control. So it is really as simple as we'll just pop in like something like pest control. Now, if we want to then exclude keywords, so if we see, for example, I've seen a couple of times it's like pest control academy or pest control training or pest control recruitment and things like that to come up, you want to go over and exclude the keywords of like recruitment, technology platforms, anything to do with not the actual local business, but it's like associated with the local business. We want to remove those businesses and just have the local business. Um, the other thing as well that you can do, which will broaden your search, can be to tick these two boxes here. So social media description and SEO description. The um, reason you want to do that is, uh, although they may not be 100% accurate, you'll have a larger list of companies that fall under that that might have the words pest control in their description. So you want to check those. Um, so that's in terms of like the filtering for industries that'll probably take, that'll be the main like filter that kind of bridges everything down and then you can kind of like fine tune everything. Now the, this final one here that I wanted to run through is in my opinion, like a thing that I think not many people necessarily think about, which is if you're using other tools like clay, for example, and you're using things like waterfall enrichments. Now uh, waterfall enrichments for those that don't know is essentially multiple data providers that will try and find, in this case, uh, email addresses, right? So if you're trying to find email addresses for local businesses, sometimes it can be hard. Um, however, with a waterfall enrichment, what it does is it will use one data provider. So that could be, for example, you know, Apollo, right? And if it finds that email addresses, great, it will add the email addresses. But if it hasn't found it within Apollo, because for whatever reason, Apollo doesn't have the methods or isn't able to find that email, then it will try another data provider. So for example, like Prospio, and if Prospio is able to find it, then it will add the email address. And then you'll have no email from Apollo, but you'll have the email from Prospio. Um, or if it's found it on Apollo, it won't obviously bother trying with Prospio or any other email provider. And then you can add several different providers. And then what it'll do is maximize your data coverage so that you're able to find the email address. You're basically ex like exhausting all of your options for actually finding the email address. Um, so it's really, really important that you do that. Um, so you can get as maximum coverage as possible. And the great thing here is that with Apollo, a lot of times when you filter, you might filter by, um, you might filter by, you know, obviously you want verified emails and you want maybe guest emails, right? Um, now, two uh, sort of other things that you can tick here 
is new data available. So if Apollo has new recently updated it, but the most important one here is NA, right? And the reason why NA is really important is because Apollo is not going to always be able to find the person's email address, right? So if Apollo is not able to find their email address, instead of just going like, cool, I, I guess I can't reach out to that person. No, we're going to still take that data of the person's, you know, name, um, website, like the company, everything, but we're going to run it through a different data provider instead. So that means, again, we're going to have maximum coverage because we're getting emails from Apollo, but then for the ones that Apollo doesn't know, we're going to take the whole list and we're going to push that through uh, a waterfall enrichment. So it's going to basically find uh, email addresses on Prospio. And then if it can't find them there, it'll try Detagma. If it can't find it there, it'll try Find Email. If it can't find it there, it'll try Hunter and so on. And by the end of that entire enrichment, you'll have the best coverage you can for the email addresses. So you might start off with a list of like, say, 1.3k emails um and it's got you know for example 400 that you can't find the email address for instead of just reaching out to 1.3 people or 1.3k people you might reach out to 1.5k people or 1.6k right and there could be several meetings and a client or two within those extra people that you decided to take a little bit extra step uh, and time to do um and the way that you would do this i'm not going to show you full 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 because it'll take a little bit of time the way you do this is and i've got other tutorials on this as well is you would export this list within apollo um so for example you just select all people and then use something like instant data scraper to export all of this you've obviously got the email addresses of people you need to add it to the list first to make sure that you're actually finding the email address um once you've got that then you export that um and then what you're going to do is you're going to come over to to, to clay you're going to import companies from csv you're going to upload the csv and then you're going to add and i've got a separate video on this as well you're going to add the waterfall enrichment and what that's going to do is then going to find different um basically try and find email addresses from different providers um so we'll have the apollo emails there and then it'll try different providers to maximize your data coverage basically for all of the emails that you can possibly get um, and then once you've done all of that, and then you can validate the emails and just double check that they're validated. And if anything, you will find, I would say, probably an extra 10 to 20% of emails that you can actually reach out to, which again, is like huge. If you're just, you're just being more resourceful with the thing that you have. And again, Apollo is not the best way of finding locals, local uh, businesses, but, um, but it, it still can be good if you just think about it in a slightly different way. So I hope this video has been useful. Um, as always, you know, if you are interested in, in getting some uh, done for you outbound services, or you're looking to, you know, generate more pipeline, close more deals, things like that, um, then book a call below uh, and I can help you out. And we do obviously processes like this and everything like that. Um, if not, like, subscribe, all that kind of jazz. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.